Today you'll see a really pretty woven jacket that once you get past the fitting stage, it can be pretty easy to sew. Really clean lines on the front, no collar, no lapel, single button. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and I have a really nice jacket to share with you. A few months ago, I put up a poll on my Patreon page Every month I do a full sew along there, usually an intermediate project. And the Dorothy woven jacket from Style Arc won the votes, I believe it was in February. I'll be sharing a summary of the sewing here. I've had this pattern for plenty of years. My mum also likes the style and it was in the plans to make while I was visiting my parents in the summer. Didn't get around to it. Hopefully I can get around to make it when I see my mum again. And it's so, so pretty. I mean. That clean V neckline, like deep neckline on a blazer is not that easy to find. About closures, you know, you don't have to worry about zippers or a bunch of buttons because it's just one button. So that's pretty doable. From the button, the front angles into a point. So it's a little longer in the front than in the back. You have princess seams everywhere, <laughs> front and back, center back seam, lots of opportunity for you to play with the feet and customize to your shape when you have so many seams. When I see a lot of seams in a garment, I see that as a positive, as a way to get something to fit better than if you just had straight side seams, that is harder to fit. The shoulders are meant to be at the shoulders and you have a two-piece sleeve. It's generally a semi-fitted style, I would say more of a fitted type of jacket or blazer. You won't be able to fit big layers underneath because there's not a lot of space in there. The length on the front is going to be around the full hip, but it'll be around in the mid hip at the back. It's a little shorter. I think that's really cool. A little bit edgy, but I've also seen styles like this for quite a while now. I don't think you would look out of place if you wore a style like this now or like a few years from now. I think this style can always be worn. And I think the style that doesn't have lapels and collars can suit a lot of people, especially if you have a larger chest. Yeah, that's just my opinion around fashion and styling. I do have opinions about that, but this is not a channel about that. But still, I mention little bits here and there. The insides are finished with facings, so it's very neat inside. This one is designed for woven fabric, light to medium weight, other ones recommended, so 100% linen, linen rayon blend, maybe a medium weight denim, I wouldn't go heavier, maybe a wool suiting, even if. What I would not want to do with this one is use a stretch woven or a heavy uh, structured knit like Ponty or Scuba. I don't think the fit would be the same. So if you do your fitting and your muslin, everything with a woven fabric, and then you expect the fit to be the same with a knee, it's not going to be, especially noticeable on the armhole and shoulders. And I mention this because I've done this, <laughs> I've done this before, and I've ended up having to make major fitting changes to make the style work for a knit than if it was just made in a woven. So I would just use a woven. For this one, I knew I wanted to use a red fabric I've carried around. It's a linen rayon blend, 55% linen, 45% rayon, quite structured. You'll do well with a structured fabric. You don't need a drapey fabric to get the design to look good. So I would just say the structured is gonna be easy to work with and everything's gonna just sit where it has to be. And about going heavier with heavier fabrics, maybe I would consider sizing up because the thicker, the heavier the fabric, when you sew each seam, it ends up taking away space from the inside of the garment if your fabric is heavy, so the jacket ends up smaller than it would be if you're using a lighter material. And that is across the board, <laughs> across the board. So light to medium weight, I think is okay. You will need a fair amount of interfacing. I'm actually interfacing a lot more than the pattern recommends. So I did use a fair amount, <laughs> but it's all justifiable in my opinion for a nicer result. You'll see the sizing from 4 to 30 Australian. That goes up to a 63 inch hip. Now, because this is an older pattern, it doesn't come in multi sizes. So if you buy PDF patterns, for example, and you get a size 18, you'll get size 16 and 20 in the files that are emailed to you. You won't get all the sizes. Newer patterns, I know, have other options and lots of sizes and layers. It's a bit more modern, but yeah, this is not the case for this one. Looking at all the measurements, I decided to make a size 16. This is a style that is fitted, semi-fitted, as I mentioned, especially around the bust. So you have a little less than two inches of ease at the bust, which makes it fitted, in my opinion. You'd want to wear something really light underneath. Then at the waist, you have more space around six inches and at the hips around three inches. These patterns are drafted originally for a B cup size. 
sewing bee cup size, which means there's a two inch difference between the high bust and the full bust. And I know from the get go that is not going to be right for me. <laughs> I am a C sewing cup size. Also, my bust height is lower than most patterns. So I know that those adjustments have to be done. Here is my muslin. This is a size 16 made just as is. I use contrast fabric so you can see the side piece and the center. Here I marked where the button hole and button is going to be. Of course, there's going to be a facing there. And because this is so slanted, I made sure to stay stitch on this test garment so that this doesn't end up stretching and then making you think there's something wrong with the fit. I always just sew one sleeve because I also want to know if I can make this sleeveless and what changes I need to make when I eventually make one sleeveless. So that's just an extra thing for me and I sew on the sleeve on this side. And it's got the princess seam here originally made for a B cup and I do want to do a full bust adjustment and transform this into a C cup. If I just adjust this right here, I have slight pulling here right at the fullest part of my bust and it's just the front. There's no issues on the back so I definitely need that little bit added where I'm going to do that full bust adjustment right there and I think it's going to make the fit a lot better. It's not going to be super dramatic I'm just taking it from a B to a C but it will make a difference and get rid of this light pulling that I have right there. Otherwise shaping wise the princess seam is already doing a pretty good job here. I don't have really dramatic drag lines like this you know maybe if my cup size was larger I would have a bit of diagonal drag lines like this. In this case it's not too dramatic but there is just a little bit. I've sewn this just as is. I haven't lowered the princess seam curve or done anything like that and what I've done here is mark on that center front where my actual bust apex is, my bust height. I find the sleeve from here to there is a little narrow for me so I find it a little bit fitted on this area. So I'm going to be adding maybe half an inch here and doing a full bicep adjustment and I'll be doing that on the upper sleeve piece right there. I might need to tweak the waist a little bit and bring it in. So I've placed a pin where my actual waist is right there so that I know and I'll do the same on the back. Otherwise I think the back fit is good and I like the original length. Okay I did all the fitting adjustments I wanted to do. This is the original one, this is the modified one. I've got the white princess seam now. I added half an inch to the upper sleeve piece and I'm really happy now. I can move my arm inside. It's still a slim fitting sleeve but I don't have that pulling there that I had with the other piece so I'm glad I did that. I think the length is okay. You can see that this is resting above my bust. My apex is right here. So I determined that before and I lowered my apex by an inch. Here is the new curve and the fullest part is there. It's one inch lower and it's actually at my bust height now and I think it fits better. On a princess seam when this is wrong you get a lot of excess here and you get tightness here because the fullest part is above and then when your actual bust is lower you get a narrower area there and that contributes to the pulling but also not having the right cup size. So I'm really happy here. I think this is great. It's just half an inch extra from a B to a C. I have already taken it in here on the side seams at the waist. Both sides a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch. I've done the same with the back seams and I'm really happy with the fit now. I think the back looks better than it used to be, although it was fine. I think it's fine tuned to me. And I can go ahead and cut my proper fabric now. I already have a full video showing you how to do a full bust adjustment on a style that has princess seams and actually the Dorothy was one of the projects I was showing as examples of the before and after. So have a look at that video if you need to do that adjustment. I also did the inverse scenario when you want to do a small bust adjustment with a princess seam. So that content is already here on the channel. So when I did my full bust adjustment I adjusted for one cup size which meant adding half an inch to half of the front which means I get a full inch extra on the front around the bust area, which means I'll get a little under three inches of ease at the bust, which is cool. That's perfectly fine. I did bring all the seams in towards the original waist size for me. I didn't need that sp extra space that you get with a full bust adjustment. And that's so easy to do when you have so many seams in the front, you know, around the whole garment. The other thing I figured out with my test garment was that this two-piece sleeve was just too tightly fitting for me. I could move, but I could feel slight pulling here and I'd rather not have that. Now, this is an adjustment I never do. Like, I never have to do that. I consider my arms to be quite regular in proportion to my shoulders and my bust so it's not an adjustment I ever make but I do know how to do it. <laughs> that video is coming, I'm still preparing it. I did film the process while making this jacket with a two-piece sleeve. It's a little different, I want to also film it on a regular sleeve um, but it's a scenario that is hard for me to replicate because I usually don't find patterns where I need to do that so that's coming. And in regards to sewing Stout argues is a 3-8 seam allowance, 
but it's not the same seam allowance everywhere. That's just for the main seams. Around the neckline, facings, all those types of areas, you have a quarter of an inch seam allowance, which is my favorite, favorite. I love that seam allowance. It's so easy to work with. So I'm gonna share some of the construction. I'm gonna show you the pieces I interface. I think in the majority of jackets that have a facing inside, you would only interface the facing. In this case, I decided to interface the facing and the center front piece, pointing an arrow so you can see what piece I'm talking about. Those are actually cut from the same pattern piece. You cut it four times. And the reason I decided to do that because of the angled feature. So on the front, you see it goes like this. That is bias over time. If that center front piece is not interfaced, it can end up growing and deforming. But then your facing underneath hasn't done that because it's stable due to the interfacing. And you might have seen this around, maybe in the sewing community or maybe on the street where someone's walking and the garment is pulling up close to the center. And that's just because the garment has grown and stretched out and the facing is shorter inside and it does not look good. <laughs> I don't want that to happen to the clothes I make. And it's not a crime to interface more on jackets. Believe me, you can interface the whole jacket if you want it. <laughs> Higher end clothing, clothing that's not made in the fast fashion realm, sometimes it's fully interfaced. So I see that as a plus. So I decided to interface that area as well, which is not in the pattern and other areas. So let's see. Here are all the pattern pieces for the Dorothy jacket. Over here we have the back. This does have a center back seam. It's not shown on the liner, so I was surprised that the seam was actually there. There is some shaping on this seam, so you can't just cut it on the fold, and I'm glad it's there. Side back piece, princess seam right there. Side front piece, center front piece, and the curve of the princess seam was lowered to match the bust height. And these center front pieces, you use the same pattern piece for the facings. There isn't a separate pattern piece for these. So that's why you can see there are four pattern pieces here, two pairs mirrored. Originally, you were just supposed to interface the facing, but I interface the front piece as well. So it looks smoother and it has a longer lasting result. All these slanted areas right here that I want to protect, and I think the single layer would have changed shape over time. So if you can interface the center front and the facing, and then here are the two pieces for the sleeve, the under sleeve, and the upper sleeve. That piece that you see up there is on the fold, and that is the back facing. The main back will have a seam there, but the facing won't, it will be on the fold. There aren't many pieces to block fuse, but one of them is the back facing. I've created a piece and just extended it so I don't have to do it on the fold. I have already got a piece of fabric that's interfaced, and I'm cutting that out, and that's how I get a super accurate shape and size that stays true to the original. From what you saw, I did the same to cut out these. And here at the bottom, you can see I have these darker red areas. A while back I did find some red interfacing. It's the one that stretches and I've saved it and used little bits here and there on red projects and this was really practical for what I did to the bottoms here to stabilize the hems. This is tricot knee interfacing that I applied on the areas of the hem. This is something extra that I'm doing that's not in the pattern but let me show you up closer how I did it on one of these pieces. I think it was the under sleeve that I filmed. So the hem allowance is 3.5 centimeters, which is about one and three quarter inches. And I wanted to interface double that, but a little bit less so that when I fold up this hem allowance, you wouldn't see the interfacing there. I put some tracing paper and marked it there with a tracing wheel all along the bottom of these pieces. So I knew that's the area I wanted to interface. And I interfaced that area first, leaving the pattern piece at the bottom a little bigger. After that was all fused and neat, then I cut out the bottom pieces of each of these shapes. And that's how I have interfacing on the hem right here on the upper sleeve, the under sleeve, the side front, the side front, the side back, and the back. All of them have that interfacing there. This doesn't because that's already interfaced, basically. You can skip that if you want. I just know it's gonna look so much better. This is the type of needle I'll be using for this blazer. It's a universal needle, number 9014. I think it'll be appropriate for the layers. For the regular seams, I'll be using a 3.0 stitch length, and if I find myself in an area where it's bulky and there's a lot of layers I'll just increase that to 3.5. I'm using a regular polyester thread. Here is my center front piece. Remember I had two pairs. I've just chosen one to be the main front piece. The other one's going to be the facing. They are the same. This is a slanted area. Even though this is interfaced I'm still going to stay stitched because I want to protect this as many ways as I can and I'm just going to double up. I was really careful when I was interfacing, cutting, manipulating but there's still the potential for this to stretch so I'm going to 
minimize the stitch. Style Arc uses a quarter of an inch seam allowance for these types of seams when you're uniting this later to the facing. So the stay stitching I'm going to do is going to be quite on the edge right here. I'm sewing from the top to the bottom and I want to do both in the same direction. So when I do the second piece, it'll be with the fabric flipped. I am going to go the extra mile and do the facings as well. So I'm going to go all in and do all the stay stitching I can. The neckline is a deep V. There's a lot of bias there. I do want to protect it as much as possible. This is the back piece and here we have the back neckline. I also want to stay stitch this before I keep going with anything else. Just get the stay stitching out of the way. Then you don't have to think about it. And I'm going to do it directionally from here to the center on both of these layers. The seam allowance that we use later to attach the facing is a quarter of an inch so this is going to be very close to the edge. I'm also going to stay stitch the neckline of the back facing. You can see it right here and I'm going to do it directionally so from one shoulder into the center and then I'm going to flip the fabric and go from the other shoulder into the center and now I'm going to be really happy to work with these pieces knowing that they are going to be protected with the interfacing and the stay stitching. Now to press it on this side I am going to be using some silk organza on top because I don't want to have shiny linen fabric later. I'm just putting up a rolled piece of fabric underneath to create some shape and volume instead of pressing this curve on the flat ironing board. I don't have a ham and this works. You can see how this gives you that space you need there for the bust. I think that looks really nice. I'll do the same on the other side. Here we have the back all assembled, all the seams done, everything pressed, surged and now we're just going to take our front pieces and put them on top and align the shoulders. You don't need to surge the raw areas here of the shoulders because that's going to be hidden inside the facing so you're not going to be able to see that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and sew the side seams, press them open. If we were doing a facing that needed to be top stitched down then it would be easier to leave the side seams for later after you've sewn the neckline and the facing and all of that. But in this case we're not going to be doing that with the facing, it's going to be flipped towards the inside but I'm not going to be top stitching it down anyway. So I think it's totally okay to sew the side seams before sewing the facing. Just regular 3 8 of an inch seam allowance to get these two together. You can see that little shape curving up. I'm going to snip about an inch away from there. Just one snip to release the tension of the seam allowance around that little curve. When we press it, it'll lie nice and smooth. So one snip there and another one over here. Here I have the shoulder seam. Remember I did a little snip right there? You can see how this naturally would open up and relieve that tension there. If you didn't do the snip, this would be super tight here and it just wouldn't lie right on the shoulder. The side front piece has a shape going out like this and the side back piece has this shape going in. So it's a little fiddly to match them up, but it is possible. I just match them up up to there and then I'm going to put a pin here. I'm going to sew right there at 3 8 and then I'm just going to twist the fabric here to match the shape that's behind it. And when I get to this point, I'll stop, I'll lift my press the fold and turn it like a little pivot right there. That's the only different thing with this side seam. It's not just all the way down straight, you know? I'm going to take this pin out, lift my presser foot, move the fabric, adjust the direction here. So that's how that looks. Now when we open this up, I think it's really important to press the seams open because of this shape also. At the hem allowance there, when you fold it up, it's going to make sense. See we have this slanted shape coming from the front and then it goes off straighter at the back. So it totally makes sense that the shapes were not the same. So just make sure you pay attention to that and just dedicate a bit more time right there. Here I have the facing pieces. These are the front facings. It's actually the same pattern piece as the center front. It's just that this is going to work as a facing. And at the back here, we have the back facing. It goes all the way across the back. Now, these facings are a little different because they involve the armhole partially right here. And I'm just going to sew the shoulder seams exactly the same as I've sewn the main shoulder seams. I'm going to do the same little snip I did that, press it open. Over here, you could serge it and that would be perfectly acceptable. Same as this area from underneath the armhole here all the way down. You could serge it, that would be fine. But I found some bias tape that I made a few years ago that I still have. I made this in a chiffon that has an ombre sort of color. So there's areas that are slightly lighter than others. And I have just the right amount, I think, to just wrap the binding around this edge and the others. And this is the best bias tape I find. It's so lightweight, it's not bulky, and it's just gonna look pretty and finish the edges of the facing like that. So this is totally optional.
Now this partial armhole, I just surged it. I didn't bind that. I want to avoid bulk around the armhole. So that's fine. Over here with the excess serger thread, I looped it and just tied it up there just so it's neat on both ends. Here the hem allowance is three and a half centimeters, one and three eighths. So I'm gonna be measuring in metric because it's just easier for me, <laughs> whatever is easier for you. And I'm just gonna be pressing this up. Here it's gonna protrude by three eighths when you fold this up. We hadn't sewn this all the way down to the bottom when we did this seam. Here I have the under sleeve and the upper sleeve and I'm going to press up the hem allowances while this is extended and on its own. It's much easier to do it now than try to do it when the sleeve is already assembled and you're trying to do it on the round. This is when we get to match the facing to the neckline. So we're just going to match these up right sides together along the neckline, matching the shoulder seams here on the back and then coming over to the front and matching everything. Along the neckline around the half point you'll find the little mark right there. It's going to match the one on the back and then going all the way down. And these will have the same length because they are the same pattern piece. Where we have this angle, I've just drawn a dot where I'm going to pivot. Seam allowance is only a quarter of an inch so I really don't want to eyeball that. Now over here you're going to be sewing it a quarter of an inch but then you're going to be sewing this part at 3 8 so I've also drawn a dot there now what you do over here what you want to do here is just keep it like it is bring this and your facing from this side is going to protrude a little bit because your facing is going to be extended but your center front piece was pressed towards the center so that's how it's going to be here on this side when we sew this we're just going to end up closing that up and then when we flip it this hem folded up is going to be inside the facing Okay, now I have these bottoms of the facings to finish and I've swapped to my regular presser foot and this is going to be at 3 eighths. Now, I actually think it would be easier to do it from this side because I can see the fold of the hem and I'm going to make sure not to catch it. So if I do it from the other side, I won't see. So I'm just going to swap my pins over to this side. Sometimes you can switch this around if it's going to help you visualize better. In this case, both of the layers are interfaced, so it doesn't really make a difference. If I had one layer interfaced and one wasn't, I would rather have the interfaced layer on top, but that's not the case right here. So I can just switch it and sew it like this. So I can see clearly where I'm going to sew and I'm going to keep the 3 8 seam allowance nice and accurate. One important thing is to always snip when you have round areas on facings that are going to be turned in because it relieves the tension. So I've done a few snips right there already. I've put my blind hem presser foot and I've moved the needle to the left. This presser foot is super helpful for sewing on the edge. The only downside is that because of the way this sews, the, the whole bulk of the jacket is stuffed going into there, but there's no other way around that. So from this bottom, I'm not going to be able to start right at the bottom of that corner, of course, but I'm going to go as low as I can. I just need to find a way to get all of this under here and push this little corner inside and I think that's as far as I can go. Remember when you use this presser foot your facing is going to end up on your left hand here and so is the seam allowance going there. If you're using a regular presser foot then you can do it the other way and then all the bulk of the jacket is around this area but I don't mind the bulk here as long as this is helping me and it always ends up super neat. Always touch with your fingers that you can feel the seam allowance there when you're sewing because sometimes it does want to flip to the other side. Now here we have this point from the neckline I'm also not going to go all the way here. I'm going to stop a little before, reinforce, and then pick up again here and keep going. Here on the bottom, I would also like the seam to roll to the inside. I'm not going to understitch, it's just too difficult to have good access. So what I'm going to do basically is just finger press the seam as much as I can here to like open it up and set it. I also don't want to go to the iron because I know I'm going to burn myself a lot. Try to make it as flat as you can like that. And now with my fingers, I'm going to roll the seam towards the inside by a tiny little bit here. This is the bottom and we could only understitch from here up so there's an area that's not understitched. I just use my fingers to make sure there's like fake understitching there. <laughs> there's not going to be any but I can mimic that with the iron and just roll the seam 
a little bit in. In any jacket that's well made, you never want to see the seam when you're wearing it. You always want that seam to be tucked to the inside of the jacket. Even when there's a collar, lapel, any type of style, you never want to see this seam right on the edge. From the right side, you just want to see a really clean fold, never the seam. And that's what understitching accomplishes. It just keeps the facing to the inside, but where you don't have the understitching, you can do it by hand, but by basting it and then just pressing it that way and it will stay. The last little things I did inside the jacket were to tuck down the facing at the center front seam so I just made sure everything was nice and aligned and I folded that up and did a few little stitches there but just in the seam allowance not on the jacket and same as on this side so this comes over here and you're going to meet the armhole so I was just careful to line everything up very neatly like this also matching up the shoulder seams I did a little tuck right here and over here on this partial armhole I did a little tuck right there I would never want to sew the facing and put the sleeve in and have all those layers in one seam I think that would make the sleeve look horrible so I think the facing just lying like this inside is better it's gonna look better on the body in my opinion here's my Dorothy blazer I'm gonna show you some details I had to get under this little roof it suddenly started raining Anyway, I chose a red linen rayon blend, more linen than rayon, it's quite structured and I had a lot of fun with some details on the inside. Here are my sleeves, they are a two-piece sleeve and I do have a bicep adjustment there that added half an inch to the upper sleeve just to give me a bit of comfort, I felt they were a bit slim fitting. And on the inside there's a facing on the back, you can see it's shaped, I've got my label there and I finished the edges with bias tape I made out of matching chiffon. I wanted it to be really lightweight to avoid bulk and the facing goes all the way to the front. The facing is exactly the same piece as the center front piece. So all of this center area is double. It's also finished with a bias tape made out of chiffon. I decided to interface both of these pieces right there so that when you wear it, this center area that's slanted is not gonna end up stretching over time. I've only got the facing tucked in a few areas. I didn't wanna have this area of the facing be caught in the seam of the sleeve because that is very bulky, very uncomfortable. I would rather not. <laughs> I'd rather just sew on the sleeve, no more sew on the facing and then being their own little pieces inside and just tucked down in a few areas like the shoulder seam, this princess seam is tucked right there and I've also got a little hand tack done right there and that keeps the facing nice and neat inside. That is how the hem looks inside, it's quite slanted and it comes behind the facing. I've done that hem by hand as neatly as I can. I would never want to sew that on the machine, I think it would ruin the whole look. So I put it back on the hanger. <laughs> Love the princess seams on the front. Princess seams on the back, centre back seam, or great to do some customised shaping. I love doing that with jackets. And this is what I like the most. It goes in and then goes out diagonal into a little point. I think it's really cool. I love jackets like this. I don't think it's a style that is going to be out of style. I think it's pretty classic and just different to a typical blazer. Yeah, I'm really happy to have this red one. The sewing is not complex at all. It's not hard. You don't have a lot of collars and things. There's no pockets. It's quite easy to sew once you get past the fitting stage, which I think everyone needs to do their own adjusting. You should dedicate a bit of time to that. You'll see it styled two ways. One is with my Sunday romper that you just recently saw on the channel. I actually chose that ITY in that print because it's an outfit I wanted to have and two items I thought would go great together. So you've already seen the romper, this is another way just with a blazer making it a little bit more dressed up. And you also see it with my black legato jeans that I made last year. So let's see. This is my Dorothy blazer from Style Arc. I sewed a size 16. I used a linen rayon blend, red color, love it. I love this design, how clean the neckline is. It's really streamlined. It's like a deep V and you have a single button there. The front is slanted outwards in an angle, longer in the front, shorter in the back. I really love how clean that is. The sleeves are two-piece sleeves. I think the shoulders fit well. It is a slim fitting jacket. It is a slim fit design. You can't fit a lot of layers underneath it. You can see my single button up close. I did do a full bust adjustment to add one cup size extra from a B to a C and did some customized shaping there on all these seams. You have princess seams on the back as well. It's finished the facings inside. Overall it's an easy jacket to sew. I think what could take a little longer is just getting the feet customized to yourself. Once that's done it was really really enjoyable. I've styled it over my Sunday romper from Love Notions that I've made recently and I actually made it to match this jacket because I knew the colors were going to be just right. I'm really happy with my red jacket. Here 
here I have it over my legato jeans and I think this blazer could be worn many many ways and it's gonna be a staple for me I wanted to have a red blazer like this for such a long time and I'm really happy I got to sew it Oh, and as a quick edit, some of you have been asking if I've been sick because my voice shows it, and yes, I've been battling a huge cold for the last week or so. I've never had fever or that, but I've had a few days where I just felt really run down. I've still been working because I have deadlines, but I feel I've turned the page, but my voice, my voice is still a bit wonky. So I apologize about that. I've been drinking water, you know, trying to get my voice to sound better, but yeah, that's how it is right now. Thank you for your concern. I'm so happy with my Dorothy. I think it's just the coolest jacket. This could work really well as formal and as informal and with red, I'm the happiest. The princess seams are always a process, but I think it's worth it. It's just so nice and so well fitting. All these seams, back seams, princess seams, it's all really good. And I'd love to make this again. You saw that I styled this jacket over my recently made Sunday romper. You would have seen that one a few hours ago on the channel. So if you haven't seen that, have a look at that romper because it's the first neat romper that I actually love and I'm gonna wear. <laughs> it's a little hack to the shorts to make it a little wider to look more like a dress. It's still Friday, so that pattern is $5 still. Next week on Monday, May 1st through to Friday the 5th, Love Notions is having a huge site-wide sale, 40% off. Quite a hefty discount and you can grab the patterns that you've been eyeing. I'll have special content around that week, so I'm excited to share. Yeah, so that's all from me. Have an amazing weekend and I'll see you back here on this channel on Monday. Bye.